I was in the shower this morning. Yes, I do shower once a month, whether I need it or not. Now, while I was in there, I was thinking whether format and resolution was something I should include with a subject like camera craft. It is a subject that many people have some problems getting their head around, and I certainly did in my early days, so it's okay to be a little confused with this subject. Format and resolution are often used in the same breath, but format has very little to do with resolution. Format is just the shape of our image. We all recognise a square format, but we could have a high, medium or low resolution square, one tiny square or one huge one, but the format remains a square. Aside from our photography, we may see on a pack of printing paper that it comes in A4 format, and with that will be the length and width in inches or millimetres. In photographic circles, we tend to hear the words aspect ratio used, and then the size that defines the aspect ratio written in pixels, such as 1920 pixels by 1080. But it's much the same thing as the paper. Most digital SLR cameras produce a 3-2 aspect ratio, and we can easily check that we just take the image width from your camera and divide by 3. Then multiply the result by 2 and you should have the correct height. Here the width is 5616 divided by 3 and it equals 1872. 1872 multiplied by 2 gives me 3744 which is correct for the images that my camera gives me. The maths just get a little more tricky when we start to think about the HD aspect ratio, which is 1920-1080, which is currently the size your PC monitor is likely to be, any laptop you own is likely to be that size, and even our flat screen televisions. I also have a Canon G16 compact camera where the aspect ratio is 4.3. Now that's a little bit easier to see because the pixel size across the width is 4,000 and the height is 3,000. Now this camera allows me to also select a 16.9 format or aspect ratio and here we can see it in relation to the 4.3 version below. We can retain the 4,000 pixels in the width when we do this, but not in the height. And if you're shooting JPEG images, you're cropping off those pixels from the top and the bottom of your image. And of course, there's no getting them back later. If you were to leave the aspect ratio set at 4.3, then once you have the image on the computer, you have options. You can select any part of the image now for your 16.9 aspect ratio if that's what you wanted. And with this shot, we might choose this. Now here we couldn't use just the top part of the image for obvious reasons, but we could with other subjects. And as you can see, we have options if we retain the full file size that the camera can deliver. If we have the full size file at 4.3 on our desktop or our laptop, then we've got options to crop it in any way we choose. Remember, if we're shooting raw files, then what I've been talking about here doesn't really matter. Let me show you exactly what we would get in Photoshop's Camera Raw or any other raw editor if we were to take a camera like this and within the camera controls set 16.9 as the aspect ratio. So here we can see a raw file opened up into Photoshop's Adobe Camera Raw but as I said a few moments ago any raw converter would do much the same. Now we can see by the shape 
then in actual fact we do have our 169 aspect ratio. But if I were to go to my crop options, which are at the top of the screen, as soon as I click them, you can see that I do in fact have the rest of the image there available to me if I change my mind after I've taken the image. And in the case of Camera Raw here, if I just hit the escape key, there I am, back to my original 4.3. So in summary, if I'm shooting JPEG images and I select 169 aspect ratio on my camera, then the camera is going to discard the pixels top and bottom and we cannot get them back. If I shoot the image in RAW, it will deliver the image as a 16.9, so if that's what I want, no problem. But if I then wanted to vary the crop, raise it up, take it down a little bit, then I can do so when I shoot RAW files. In my view, unless there are very good reasons for doing so, I would always shoot at the maximum file size that I can simply because I can always reduce the size of the images later in my image editor, but I cannot do that in reverse. Now coming back to aspect ratio, perhaps a way to think about this or describe it is that we can all see here that we have a series of oblong shapes on the screen. Every one of them could be described as an oblong. But maybe we can think of aspect ratio, it's where we actually define the shape exactly as in our HD size of 1920 pixels by 1080. Now this is a topic that's going to come up quite often I think, because if we're using an SLR, then we're very likely using 3-2 aspect ratio. If we're using a compact camera, we could be using 4-3 aspect ratio. And yet, if we were to make a slideshow for our PC, our Mac, our laptop, and maybe even for our television screen, we're almost certainly going to want 16-9 aspect ratio. So it is something we're going to come across quite often.